Hi, welcome to another episode of Creating in Costume. Today I am wearing a 1940s inspired ensemble. A few weeks ago I had made a red blouse from a 1940s pattern and I just loved its feminine lines. Now the early 1940s was all about a very powerful silhouette for women. You had impressive shoulders that went into a V for victory waist. And this blouse has the widespread shoulders as well as a lovely detail. But I think in making it out of a classic Liberty print, I softened the look to make it more of a cottage core style blouse that I can certainly wear even today without anyone giving me a second glance. Now, of course, you can't see my skirt below, but I'll be sharing that in the next installment. It's a pretty teal skirt uh, that I made without a pattern, and I used a placket for the closure, and I'm going to be sharing step by step how to do that. But first, I thought it would be fun to create an herb garden. Now, in the 1940s, people were encouraged to plant victory gardens, and that was so the larger crops that were produced by farmers could be sent to our soldiers to help keep up their strength. So to make sure that everyone had plenty of fruits and vegetables, people who remained back in the States were encouraged to plant gardens to feed themselves. Now I'm almost done with my kitchen renovation and I wanted to put a sweet little herb garden in my kitchen window. I have to be honest, I have notoriously black thumbs. Almost everything that I have planted in my backyard doesn't do so well. Um, but I'm thinking that maybe because I'm in the kitchen every day and can see the state of my herb garden that maybe they will stand a better chance of surviving. And I actually ended up creating this herb garden for under $10. And mainly that was because I made do with a lot of elements that I already had in my home. You last saw these pots in my outdoor Regency gardening video on the little potter's bench. And they were terracotta in color to put them in my kitchen window seal, I wanted a soft white, so I just gave them three coats of a satin finish white spray paint that I had on hand, leaving about two hours between each coat of paint to fully dry, and that resulted in a nice smooth finish. There are a few drips on the inside, I'm not too worried about that because you're going to fill it up with gravel and dirt. So you can find these pots at any home and garden store and they're usually anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar. Um, I happen to pick these up at thrift stores and estate sales. Um, oftentimes they're in a box marked free. So this can be a really low cost project. And I already had this white tray, but you know, any type of tray that you have, um, when I water my plants, there is a drainage hole on the bottom. So I'll just probably pop them in the sink, water them, and then put them back on the tray to kind of keep the tray nice and tidy. And I found my various herbs at Trader Joe's and they were 
each I think around two dollars and fifty cents and you can often find living herbs in the produce section of your grocery store as well as of course your home and garden they tend to be a little bit more expensive at your home and garden store but really um, if you buy a packet of basil that will usually run you about three dollars it's a one-time use and then you have to buy it again but by having your own bit of basil in the kitchen um, if you put forth a three dollar investment you're going to get a lot more for your money and you also saw that I used these various orphaned sugar in creamers um, on my potting bench in the Regency gardening video and that again this is just a great way to store things that you need for your garden in a creative way and it helps uh, from these mismatched pieces of pottery from going into the landfill. So I just have a little bit of pea gravel. Um, my yard tends to be rocky, so when I'm weeding, you know, I just scoop out the rocks and I keep them in a container for when I need them for uses like this. But you can find small gravel um, like this in the pet department um, because aquariums often use gravel as well as in the home and gardening sections. Okay, so you're gonna take your pot, and as I said, it has this drainage hole on the bottom, and some of the pea gravel is really quite tiny, um, and if you put, don't cover the center with a larger piece of gravel, then it might drop through. So start out with placing, a larger stone to cover your center of the pot and then just gently, it's kind of noisy, add in just a little bit more to give like a single layer of pebbles down on the bottom and you can see two tiny pieces of gravel still kind of snuck their way down there but you don't need very much gravel at all and then you simply pop out. These um, size pots worked perfectly really for the herbs that I selected. And you just kind of gently press it. I had watered these earlier this morning um, so it's very pliable and just clean up your edges a little bit like that. And then you have your own little herb garden which is wonderful and in upcoming episodes we will be using um, some of these herbs to create some wonderful dishes in the kitchen so let me know if you try it and we will head into the next installment which is showing you how to make an easy placket closing skirt without a pattern We are having a major ice storm here in Texas, so it's a good day to sew. I have had this piece of heavier cotton. It's not quite a twill, but I thought it would be really pretty for a skirt. I'm not using a pattern. Um, I just kind of go by my waist measurements and then what length I want. So in this case, one side of my rectangle measures 26 inches and then I'm just using selvage to selvage on this because I'm going to create a placket. I don't have a zipper. I can't go out and get one so the placket will be along this edge. I tear my fabric when I'm making simple skirts like this because then that gives you Yours and there's our grace. She was done and wanted immediately in. Okay, so I'm going to make a placket along one of the side seams 
And so by using the selvage edge, that is great. I don't have to worry about fraying. And I haven't decided if I'm going to either pleat or gather the top. Um, it'll depend once I get further along in the process. The only other pieces that you will need for this skirt are your two placket pieces and the waistband. Now for my waistband, I normally make it four inches wide. And then once it is folded in half and has a half inch seam allowance on either edge, this results in a waistband that's one and a half inches wide and that feels comfortable on my waist. You can make it thinner or longer, uh, whatever suits. And of course, the length is what will suit your waist. And I usually add an inch on either end um, just for weight fluctuations as well as a sewing seam allowance. The two plackets, I normally cut a 10 by 3 inch piece and one edge is selvage, which I will show you why I opt to do that. And then you will want to fold in the bottom of each edge about a half inch and press it. So I'll go sew up the side seams of my skirt and then we'll attach the placket. Okay, I have sewn the side seams of the skirt together. On one side, which will be on my right hand side, the seam was sewn from top to bottom. Now the side that will feature the placket, which for me will be on my left hand side, I've only sewn the seam, I went 10 inches down where the placket is going to be, and then the seam was sewn from there all the way to the bottom. And I always press out my seams. It gives a more professional finish, so that's where you see this flap. It's just because I've pressed everything out. So now we'll go ahead and add the placket to that opening. For the front side of the placket, we are going to lay the pieces right sides together. And this is your skirt seam. So we're just going to match those edges and sew the edges together. Since I am using a 5 8 inch seam allowance, I'm going to continue that on the placket. And this is a quarter inch that I've just ironed up in place so that when we flip it, there will be a clean finish. All right, so you can see that I just stitched this placket piece right to the edge above where the seam is for the skirt. And I have pressed it open because the next step is we're going to fold it. And then I'm going to press this and then we're going to fold it under. So let me go ahead and press it and get it into position and then we'll move to the next step. I just wanted to let you know that if you can hear the heavy breathing, it's this girl. She is in the window seal of my sewing room, taking a nap. Okay, so we have our skirt side seam and this is the front piece and I have pressed it and folded it. I haven't stitched it down yet because I wanted to show you, but this is basically how it's going to look. Now on the back side, you will flip it. So there's where we originally stitched. So you'll take the piece and line it up with the stitch line 
and then flip it over one, one more time. So if it helps to see it from the edge, so there's our first stitch line. You'll bring in the excess piece, fold it in, and then fold it in again. And then right along this edge, we're going to stitch. And this is a great closure to use with any of the Bustle Air addresses where you are dealing with a lot of fabric and additional weight, particularly with if you're using apron over skirts or you're attaching a lot of trim. This is very sturdy. You can even add a layer of interfacing if you need further reinforcements. I have everything pinned in place now and there's two ways that you can finish this off. You can hand stitch this section and this section and that results in a less visible stitch line on your exterior fabric. That is the option that I'm going to choose. The second option is to use your sewing machine to sew here, do a corner turn, and down all the way. But then you will definitely have the visible placket stitching there. Both are equally acceptable. Um, it's just your preference. So I'm going to do a bit of hand stitching. Okay, I have finished stitching down the placket and if we flip it over this is going to be the exterior so there's just a few little pin tucks. Once we press those flat they'll be barely visible so we're well on our way. Okay so for this back side of the placket you have your skirt on the bottom and then this is the placket piece. Now this is the selvage edge and this is the torn edge. So I'm going to join the torn edge with the edge of the skirt. And I've ironed up the bottom a half inch. So I'm going to sew all along this line. I wanted to show you another angle in case you are a visual learner like myself. So this is where we have just sewn on the placket and this is the exterior of the skirt. So this is the back placket which is going to stick out just a little bit. So I'm going to fold it like this and sew it down and it's basically going to go right on the same stitch line the same stitch line as where I first attached it so I hope that makes sense okay so by using a selvage edge I just stitched it down and then where we folded up the fabric then results in a neat finish too. So when you pop it back and you look at it, this is the seam of your skirt. This is going to be the back edge. You see that it's extended just like that. Now, if you don't have a selvage edge, then you just need to turn it over by a quarter of an inch. Um, again, so that when you wash it, it won't fray and just keeps a nice finish. Okay, so this is what the finished placket will look like. And then you'll see this is our extension piece. And this is the piece that we hand stitched. It doesn't really matter uh, that this sewing line that we did on the machine shows because of course it will be covered up by the placket but just doing 
the hand stitching on that section I think results in a little bit nicer finish. So we'll be able to add our hooks and bars once we add the waistband on. For the waistband, I have added a layer of interfacing and then we're just going to fold right sides together and stitch up each end with the seam allowance. Okay, you can see where I have stitched down the edge and then I've trimmed it because we're going to flip it. Here I have flipped the other edge and you can see that by trimming it down you're able to get a nice sharp point on that corner. And then we're going to attach this edge to the waistband of the skirt. Along the top edge of the skirt I have run two gathering lines so now I'm going to pull those to fit the waistband and then we'll attach the waistband to the skirt. All of the gathers have been pulled up to meet the waistband and everything has been distributed evenly so I am ready to sew it up. At this stage before I secure the interior waistband down I go ahead and just try it on just to make sure that the waistband and the skirt do fit and then I come in here and I just sort of clean up any gathering stitches that I can see and I do that with a seam ripper and it looks like Grace has come to visit and will help me. So the waistband was sewn down on the one side and then it was pressed and then I have flipped the interior waistband and just folding it under to match where the waistband is and I've done that all along the entire waistband and now I'm going to hand stitch it closed. Again I hand stitch because then the stitches are less visible than when done on a machine but you can certainly sew it down on a machine if you'd like. just hit the subscribe button in the lower hand corner. In the description box below I will link to the post on my website which features additional images as well as step-by-step -step written directions of today's projects. I hope you have a great day.